Hello again, I'm John McGovern, and today I'm going to be talking about Edmund Spencer's epic poem, The Fairy Queen. The Fairy Queen was the most celebrated poem of the Elizabethan period, but today it's only read by a small subset of readers. If you compare that to Shakespeare, for example, which still has quite a large audience. And in one sense, that's because the Fairy Queen is strange to us, is alien to us. Uh, with Shakespeare, once you've got past the, the initial barrier of the unfamiliar language, there's still a lot which appeals to the modern reader, the human interest, the human relationships, the plot twists. And it can be a bit harder to find that in Spencer, but it is well worth the effort. Uh, Spencer can seem a little static, but it is no less complex and no less interesting than Shakespeare. The biggest mistake that can be made is to view the Fairy Queen simply as a quaint uh, period piece. Actually, the most important thing is to be on the lookout for the vitality and the interest of the poem. The Fairy Queen started circulating in manuscript form in around 1587. That's the year before the Spanish Armada. Um, and manuscript, of course, means handwritten as, as opposed to being printed. And then the first three books were printed in 1590 and the complete poem was printed in 1597. The Fairy Queen is a huge poem. It's, uh, it's around 300,000 words, which is uh, about three times the length of Paradise Lost and half of the length of the Bible. If you're interested in reading the whole poem, I would say the trick is to, is to allocate a day to each book. So there are six books in total. So if you're lucky enough to, have the, to, to be able to dedicate a whole week to it, you could, read, you could read it Monday through Saturday, one book at a time. Or alternatively, you could read one book every Saturday for six weeks. I, I like this edition. Um, it's generally considered the best, the, the Longman edition. Uh, this one's the first edition of 1977. Um, and it was, there was a second edition, first printed in 2001, uh, revised by two Japanese scholars. And the text of these editions is slightly different. I, I won't get into the technicalities of this right now. Um, but with Spencer, unlike Shakespeare, there, is, there aren't great textual problems with the poem. So there will be differences in spelling and punctuation mainly, but I would say it doesn't really matter uh, which text itself you are using. But this edition is great because the, the, the footnotes are fantastic. And uh, it also has a, a list of characters in the start. Uh, one, one of the biggest difficulties with the Fairy Queen is to, is to know exactly which characters are being talked about at any given time. So there's a table of, uh, of characters at the start, which uh, it, it shows, you, shows you the first book in which the character appears. So that, c that can be really handy. The, the Fairy Queen is an allegorical epic romance in the style of the Italian poets Tasso and Ariosto. And an allegory, it's quite difficult to define allegory, but you could think about it as, as like an extended metaphor where every detail of a literary work furthers some uh, political or moral message. Animal Farm is an example of a modern allegory which symbolizes the Russian Revolution, for example. The Fairy Queen is a poem of paradoxes and this was uh, memorably brought out by C.S. Lewis, the famous uh, author of the Narnia books, in 1936, where he said that um, you can make two different lists to describe Spencer and both of them are equally accurate, although they seem contradictory. In the first list you have Elvin Spencer, Renaissance Spencer, voluptuous Spencer, courtly Spencer, Italianate Spencer, decorative Spencer. But then on the other hand, you also have the English Spencer, Protestant Spencer, rustic Spencer, churchwardenly Spencer, domestic Spencer, thrifty Spencer, honest Spencer. And it's the, it's the tension between these two categories of, uh, of ideas and themes, which, uh, which, which really uh, brings a lot of the energy to the poem. The Fairy Queen is divided into six books. Um, there's another poem called The Mutability Cantos, which is uh, sometimes thought to be a seventh book of The Fairy Queen. But I agree with uh, Northrop Frye and other critics who, who have argued that uh, The Mutability Cantos is actually an independent, self-contained poem in the same style as The Fairy Queen. Spencer's main purpose is to teach Christian virtue. So in each, each of the six books has, has a knight who is the main protagonist and each of the six knights represents a different virtue. Holiness, temperance, chastity, friendship, justice, and courtesy. And the key underlying idea, ultimately derived from Aristotle, is that for every virtue, there are, there are two corresponding vices. So, for example, take the virtue of, uh, take the virtue of courage, and the deficiency of courage is cowardice, and the excess of courage is foolhardiness. 
And you have to look, if, if for each virtue, you have to find the golden mean between these two extremes. Um, and although most readers won't be reading Spencer for, for, for sort of uh, looking, looking for wisdom, I would say this is actually uh, quite a good uh, technique to live, to, uh, to apply in one's own life. Every stanza has the same form, and this is called uh, the Spencerian stanza. So I can give you an example. This example is taken from book three, where the witch, Duessa, manufactures a humanoid called Snowy Florimel. And Snowy Florimel is designed to symbolize beauty without virtue. Um, so this is, the, this is the stanza. Instead of eyes, two burning lamps she set in silver sockets shining like the skies. And a quick moving spirit did a ret to stir and roll them like a woman's eyes. Instead of yellow locks, she did devise with golden wire to weave her curled head. Yet golden wire was not so yellow thrice as Florimel's fair hair, and in the stead of life she put a sprite to rule the carcass dead. So this is, uh, each stanza is the same as this, nine lines with an A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C, C rhyme scheme. And the first eight lines are iambic pentameter, which uh, a ten syllable line which, as you know, is the most common uh, meter in English poetry. And then the final line is an Alexandrine, so a line of iambic hexameter. So in other words, the ninth line of each stanza is slightly longer. So that's a brief introduction to the Fairy Queen. Um, it might take a while to get your brain in gear, especially if you're not used to reading Renaissance poetry. But I would say, uh, compared to some other poets of the early modern period, uh, Falk Greville or John Donne, for example, Spencer is not too complex once you get used to it. And uh, I think you will find it rewarding. So thank you for listening. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And next time I will be explaining book one of The Fairy Queen in more detail. Mm -hmm.